Okay, just a little bit more to go. So if we have non-standard conditions, we're gonna have to use something called the Nernst equation to calculate our EMF, our E cell. So the Nernst equation actually comes from the relationships that I just outlined to you. So if you remember, delta G under non-standard conditions is equal to delta G standard plus RT ln of the reaction quotient. Um, and we just said in this slide that, that you can define delta G as negative NF E cell. So, so we get left with that statement. And over here, this delta G can also be defined as NFE, but not under standard conditions. So I'm not going to write the little circle thing. Okay. So then to rearrange it, I want to solve E cell all by itself on the left by using the standard cell potential. This is, again, that part comes from appendix E, E cat plus E n. Um, and it's going to be minus RT divided by NF times the LN of Q. Okay, so this is the Nernst equation. All right, and it lets us use any temperature. Of course, Faraday's constant and R are still the same thing. N is however many moles of electrons you have transferred. And um, LN of Q is the LN of the ratio of products to reactants. So back in chapter 19, thinking about um, the hydrogen fuel cell battery, we had this problem where we were running the same H2 plus O2 goes to water, um, but at 1,000 degrees and with other pressures. And so we found, um, let's see, we found the KC, QC is 5.85. So I'm going to use that here. You can go back through the video again if you want to see how I arrived at those. But for Q, we're going to say it's the 5.85 that we figured out from chapter 19. And we can plug it in, right? So we just figured out the E cell of this reaction. It was 1.23 volts. And so let's say we're running it at 1,000. So this is your fuel cell example again but we're doing it at a thousand degrees, okay? So we wanna know what, it, does it get better when it gets hot? You know, that's a good question to find out about any battery. So the E cell is the 1.23 volts that we, um, we just measured or calculated. It's gonna be minus R, I'm not gonna have room to, to write units. It's a terrible idea to skip them, but I'm gonna, <laughs> sorry. The temperature is 1000 Celsius plus 273, so that K is going to cancel with that K. And so for N, we just figured out we had four of them, and F is a big number. And then it's going to be LN of this number. <gasps> okay, I'm going to kind of go one step at a time so we can all follow along. So the 1.23 volts is still there. And it's going to be minus um, 10,583 on the top and a big number on the bottom. So I just did my multiplication there. And then LN of um, 5.85 is actually 1.77. I rounded. Um, I'm keeping all the significant figures in my calculator when I do this, but uh, I'll round when I write it down. So the E cell potential at a hot, hot, hot temperature is going to be lower. Not a lot lower, but enough, a little lower, you know? 
So our final answer is 1.18 volts. This is true for most batteries. The voltage tends to go down as you increase the temperature. Of course, 25 to 1,000 is a huge change in temperature, right? Um, in normal operation, near room temperature, it won't make as dramatic of a difference, but it certainly has an impact. So if you ever go design batteries, that's a thing to think about. Okay, so um, I think that this video um, is a very helpful one for you to watch about electrolysis. I will link it separately, but it kind of summarizes everything about the copper zinc um, electrochemical system we looked at in a really clean, nice way. So when you're watching this, make sure you're taking some notes, um, especially focusing on the difference between electrolysis versus voltaic cells. Okay, our last topic is quantifying electrolysis. So this applies to a lot of areas, especially things like um, chrome plating something, or if you have ever bought something, jewelry especially, that was like silver plated or rhodium plated. Um, you get things rhodium plated if you're allergic to cheaper metals uh, because it looks like silver or platinum, but it is largely uh, hypoallergenic. So anyway, you can quantify based on how much time has passed and what current you have. And this also helps you to understand how the units of uh, voltage and amps and stuff work. But this diagram walks you through all the different quantification you can do for non spontaneous reactions. So reactions we're putting energy into. You can figure out how much material is going to be plated onto your surface by doing this. So let me give you an example. If we want to know how much aluminum is produced, if we electrolyze um, for one hour and the current is 10 amps. Okay, so it has to be in seconds. So amps are defined as uh, coulomb per second. So when we say 10 amps, it means 10 coulomb, capital C, per second. So that's why we need to, we need to use the current in amps and the time in seconds. So we'll just quickly convert hours to seconds. Maybe you know this off the top of your head. I don't, I don't know how many of us do, but it's a good chance to sort of use dimensional analysis. So if we go for one hour, that's equivalent to 3,600 seconds. So we have the time and we have the amperage, so 10 Coulomb per second. So these get multiplied together and of course, seconds cancels. I just put that on the calculator. I really didn't need to. Okay. So we have 36,000 coulombs of energy. That gets us to this box. We can figure out with Faraday's constant, okay, how many moles of electrons that will be equivalent to, okay? So So Faraday's concert is coulombs and moles, so I just take the 36,000 and I'll divide by 96,485. And we find out that it's equivalent to 0.373 moles of electrons. Now, the connection between moles of electrons and moles of the substance will have to come from a balanced chemical reaction. So in this case, the only info I have is that it's aluminum chloride. So I know that the aluminum is three plus. We're adding three electrons for every aluminum and you get solid aluminum. So it's a one to three ratio. So moles of electrons goes on the bottom one mole of aluminum goes on the top. So now we're here. We, we know that there are 0 0.124 moles of aluminum. 
Now it's just a standard chapter four stoichiometry problem. All I need is the molar mass of aluminum and I can tell you how much aluminum I got. I think it's about 26, 27 something. Okay, I looked, it's 26.98. I didn't wanna be wrong about that. So 26, oh my gosh, that's not a six. 26.98 grams for every mole of aluminum. So we end up with, in just one short hour, 3.36 grams of aluminum. Okay, so this is an example problem. They could start you at any point in this process, but this is one complete problem. If you know the amp and the number of seconds that something has happened, or you can figure it out, then you can figure out how many grams of that material will be produced. So that wraps it up for chapter 20 and indeed all of Chem 2. Good job, thanks for sticking with it. And I hope that at least some of these things are helpful to you in your everyday life. Maybe you can save a little money on batteries or I don't know, something. <laughs> I promise though, in your further studies, these ideas are gonna come back, thermodynamics and electrochem especially.